Hey, this is Matt once again. What about the other videos? The paid request this time for Gia. Thank you so much for that. For those interested requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for like I said, Gia wanted me to talk about comparison Mortal Kombat versus Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Which in a way it made sense this uh, versus because it's two video game movies. Paul W. Sanders' name on both of them. Mortal Kombat 95 he directed. And then Welcome to Raccoon City he produced. Although I don't know how much might have just cashed the check, put my name on it type of thing. I don't know how much he was really involved with it. But also Mortal Kombat 95 I think is a fun, entertaining video game movie. That's fairly faithful to the source material. I thought treated the characters much better. I thought the casting, the acting was much better. I think they gave the audience much more of a fun action pat thrill ride. And did a lot of things that Walking Around Cruise City didn't. And they both had the same CGI. <laughs> the same the same shitty looking CGI, so. <clears throat> More Common 95 to me is still a very fun movie. I remember seeing that back in the day on VHS tape. Had the VHS tape. Eventually got the, the DVD, and I might have the Blu ray. That's a film I still cannot understand why it does not have a special edition. In this day and age where there's video game, I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog and all these other movies being made, there's a new Super Mario Bros. movie, you think one company would be like, you know what, people remember more combat, whether for nostalgia, whether for it's a recognizable brand, and do a special edition, get interviews, get the old commentary from the Laserdisc, get the get a new commentary, have like Robin Shaw and Lennon Ashby and even Paul W. Sanderson, get them all in a commentary, do a full-blown documentary, get, you know, Terry Tagawa, Christopher Lambert, he's talked about playing the character before, Robin Shaw and Lyndon, uh, Lyndon Ashby talked about it when they were playing an arcade game for, like, an interview you can find on YouTube, like, get these folks to talk about it, and let's get it going, what is the deal, what is the major malfunction, what is, other than the, whoever owns it, which I don't know technically who owns it now, because it was New Line Cinema. I don't know if it's still... I guess it's to be Warner Brothers or... Who it is. But I mean, there's other companies that have gotten... Whether it be Stream Factory or others... That have gotten, whether New Line Cinema or other properties to release. I mean, hell, Dr. Diggles is finally getting a Blu-ray. In the U.S., I should say. With a couple features. I mean... More combat deserves a lot more. But anyway, yes, I understand. It does not have the gore. I understand that. And More Combat is very known for the gore. So I, I, I can understand fans being disappointed because of that aspect missing. But what it does have, it has a kick ass rocking soundtrack from beginning to end, whether it be the songs or a really good musical score. This has both. Has a very fast pace. It's like ninety some minutes, give or take. It goes by really quick. It's a very slick looking movie for the most part, as in the way Outworld looks. Uh, even the the area Lou Kane we first see him at in the temple. Uh, the way the boat looks, and then going to this island, and again Outworld with the the bodies of on the crosses, and they they don't quite look right. As in, some of them don't seem, you know, <laughs> human. The characters, having Sub-Zero, having Scorpion, and they kind of, they look like the game, the way the clothes are, the way Scorpion with the eyes, you know, get over here, you know, those lines. Casting, I think Lou Tain cast very well. Robin Shaw brought a lot of, yeah, good, like, leading man charisma. A bit of charm, and especially Lyndon Ashby and Johnny Cage. He was very charming. He was very funny. I mean, it's not just the fights. I just still remember fun dialogue. 
I'm a world that I'm a bit scared of, and everyone wants to kick my ass. I feel like I'm back in high school. <laughs> Those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. I still remember dialogue portions, because Lyndon Ashby made that character. Which It's not like these characters were in-depth in the game. I mean, there's a text that's pretty much it of the Mortal Kombat games of the old. But they, they fleshed them out in terms of personality and having a bit of charm. Even the banter between Johnny Cage and Sonya. And Terry Aoyuki Tagawa was a villain that had a smile and loved being villainous. It has begun. And it was almost like he was ready to flirt with Sonya Blade. And, you know, had a smile to his face because he was pretty sure he was going to win. Christopher Lambert. He's having a ball as Lord Raiden. The fate of millions are on you. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think so. And he has the finger, you know, the lightning. Well, like I said, the, mo the movie had a twinkle in its eye. Uh, there's some really bad CGI. I'll give you that. Reptile in its reptilian form looks garbage. It looks like... What's up? It looks like... Dex or whatever the fuck video game there was back in the day. It does not look good at all. When the CGI is used, this is 95, this is when the CGI... I mean, I'm still not a big fan of CGI, but this is definitely in its infant, infamous infancy. And that's why you watch a lot of these films back in the day and the CGI is not... Up the par in the at all, but there's also some good practical work. Goro, I think Goro still looks impressive to this day, and they had plentiful fights and plentiful fights. That's what people wanted. They wanted these characters to be similar to the game, which I think they did a fairly good job with, at the way the characters look and the way the characters act, and the pacing was quick. It was about a tournament. You had the right fighters, you had the right characters, you had some pretty well done fight sequences, thanks in part to Robin Chow, and Paul W. Zanzern had a slick look for the most part, some quick editing, some great soundtrack to fill out the surrounding areas of, of the movie, and made for a fun time. Even Gene Siskel is usually a stickler for movies. Even he liked the film. <laughs> yeah. Which was surprising. And you compare that to Welcome to the Raccoon City. Yeah, you had characters like Chris Redfield and you had Claire and Leon, but they didn't know how to use those characters. You know, Claire is morose and sullen and gets all the, the great moments. Chris Redfield was a flower on the wall. He was a painting. He had nothing to do. Jill might not she might as well not have been in the damn movie. She didn't do anything. At least in more combat, Sonya had the fight with Kano. Then in Ashby dealt with Scorpion and Goro. Liu Kane dealt with Sub Zero and had the final fight with Shane Sun. At least people had their moments to shine. When did Jill have her moment to shine in Welcome to Raccoon City? Leon, he was a joke. Either getting t stuff hit to his forehead or called a joke, called a rookie, called a goof, that he shot his partner or whoever in the ass, and that's why he's here. He's so stupid and so dumb. He can't hear a damn semi-truck blow up. 300 feet ahead of him and doesn't know there's a whole dead body walking towards him on fire to the fact that the other guy, the chief, has to shoot the guy. He was completely useless until the very end where, okay, they gave him a rocket launcher and half-assed thing, half-assed moment. And the actor was not the right actor for the part, not just because of looks, but because nothing about him seemed Leon Kennedy in terms of the way his character was written, and the way he talked, the way he behaved. It's like a guy 
wearing Leon Tandy cosplay, but went to Comic Con to just fuck around and do whatever the hell he wanted. So you look at characters, the characters more common were done well with I think with the respect. And Welcome to Raccoon City it wasn't. In the more combat movie, it was about a tournament and kicking ass taking names and Sonya Blade went after Kano. Like they follow elements of the game as well. Here they just did whatever the hell they wanted. They didn't combine more combat one and two into a movie. Here they combine Resident Evil One and Two and they do a disservice to both. Resident Evil One was barely a pimple on the ass of that movie. A mansion that they're in for less than four minutes. At least that's what it feels like. And becomes worth this bullshit. You might as well cut the mansion out. And for I understand that film had so many problems. I've heard and read up that Welcome to Raccoon City had money taken out and there's all this stuff going to be filmed or going to be put in that they're going to have Wester with Ada in the police station and either Barry or someone else or Rebecca would have been in it and they would have been whoever the hell. Oh, that uh, was a Lisa Trevor. You know, the woman with the chains that seemed like she was in there for no reason. And in the movie, she gives like a tea to Claire. And then, even though the whole place is going to blow up, no one goes back for this Lisa Trevor lady going, uh, hey, this Lisa Trevor, I know she looks fucked up. She looks like, I don't know, the ring or the drudge had, uh, did some crack. And fell on her head, has some amnesia, and now she's trapped in some chains. Because she was in the BDSM the wrong or right way, however you want to view it. Uh, she helped you. She broke a damn lictor's neck as if she was Steven Seagal. And saved your life, gave you tea to escape, and then you don't even give her the common decency to go back and say, Hey, you want to join us so you could be alive? <laughs> they just forget about her ass. Yeah, you know, she saved her life, technically twice. One, killing the lictor. Two, giving us a way to get the hell out. Because without the tea, you would not have gotten to that place and known that the whole place was going to go to hell and get blown up. You don't even go back and say, oh, is Lisa Trevor alive? Will we be able to save her? You don't even think about it. <laughs> so, she died. Probably didn't know the fucking place was going to blow up. Is oh, I wonder if Claire would come back. <laughs> But I remember reading somewhere that apparently she was supposed to be in the ending. And then I think the monster like killed Lisa Trevor or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Lisa would have better explained what happened to her other than she disappeared. There's so many things about that Walking Raccoon City man from... It doesn't even have, like, even superficial. It doesn't even have good music. Or songs. I mean, not even, like, music from the game. Or anything. I mean, you think of Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat has that great... Mortal Kombat! Du, 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 du. What the fuck music is in Welcome to Raccoon City? Even the Resident Evil movie from the 2000, what, 2? Had good music. Whether you... Whatever you feel about Marilyn Manson, that was some damn good music. The, the score. Nothing in Welcome to Raccoon City. Um, special effects, they had some bad ones. At least more common was in 95. There's a little bit of excuse. This is 2020, what, 1? Whatever the, 22, whatever the hell it came out. What excuse is that? 2020, I think it's 2021. What excuse was that? It's not enough money. I've seen fucking low budget movies that cost $100,000 to have better effects. Maybe you should know your limitations and work around it to build a better movie within those. Instead of trying to do two games at the same time. Director. And also, more combat wasn't boring than 1995 one. This, what we're actually see was just boring. 
It was this uninteresting build-up. And then the payoff was what? A couple zombies are killed in both the mansion and kind of in the police station. Even those, like, can you remember a great death scene? I mean, you say, well, that's rated R, but what great death scenes are you going to think about from Welcome to Raccoon City? A chief lifted up, and I think he got his head taken off. But it's not like this ton that goes up and rips his head off, like hatchet, horror film, you know, slash film style. Do you imagine that? Like, you get a... a you have the creature up top, and you see just his head. And you have the ton, and you do it in reverse, where the you wrap the ton up, and you film in reverse. So it's just like, goes wraps around him. He's ah, screaming, then cut to a fake head, and it rips the head off, like Victor Crowley would do in Hatchet. At least that would be, oh shit, this didn't even have that. At least Mortal Kombat said, you know what, we, we're not going to have that, so at least, boom. PG-13, I know that sucks, but it made up for it with other important aspects. The actors, the characters, the way the characters, for the most part, was written. I do wish they would have done a bit more with Sub-Zero, yes. Um, I think that fight could have been longer between Luke and Sub-Zero. You know, there's nitpicks I have with that as well. Like I said the CGI is not the best. But overall, it's a very entertaining, fun, popcorn movie. What do we actually see? You can't even qualify as a popcorn movie. Which is very boring. You know, it takes itself very seriously. Except Leon Kennedy being the butt of every joke. And being ridiculously... A goofball... Shave your face, cut your hair, everything in the up down center. What to Rock Cruise City, there's not much to be satisfied about. Even as a zombie film, I saw some more gorier stuff in Dead and Deader, the Dean Kane movie. That was more entertaining as a zombie movie. That was on the sci fi channel than What to Rock Cruise City. Yeah, okay, it had the police station which looked nice from the outside. Not much else. Like, you look even the ending, like the ending of Mortal Kombat. You know, they're together, they have a few words. I don't think so. They're ready to fight. It gets you excited. Can't wait till the next one. Then they did the next one, and Annihilation was a piece of shit. This, when you get to the end, I'm like, why the fuck would I want to watch another one of these? Why would anyone want to? Let's say this, what do what I say? Let's say it was successful. Why the fuck would you want to watch more of this? More standing around, doing nothing, talking. Uh, uh, Chris Redfield trying to shoot zombies, but it's epilepsy, so you can't see anything. Uh, the Neil Madonna turned to a bad looking CGI creature. That the way this creature looks like he got 8,000 pimples ready to be popped. Out of people's assholes. Fuck that fucking piece of shit goddamn cot smuggling movie. Sorry, Johan Roberts. Don't fuck on me. Where's that referee? I don't want you, Roberts, to fuck on me. Fuck that. I am the table. More combat... It's badass. It's a badass, fun, entertaining film. Did you watch? Brisk pace. Likeable characters that I want to follow more of. And then that's one of the many reasons why Annihilation failed. It was less about those characters and more about trying to fit every, as many references as we can. There's Shadow Wolf. He's in there, and then he's gone. Never seen again. There's Sub-Zero. Has a little fight. He disappears, we never see him again. <laughs> um, or at least the other Sub-Zero. There's that... What was the... the, the oh, I forgot his name. Baraka? Like, did one thing, he's dead, I guess. 
it's like how many things can we fit in here and less about the personality that the first one had second one didn't have that and then it killed Johnny Cage which was stupid I don't care if that was in the game that's a deviation you could have done a lot of other things like the only thing I liked about more common annihilation was I like pieces of the soundtrack I like the guy who plays Jax I actually liked him and his character uh, that was really the only guy I liked was Jax I liked the actor I thought he did what he could with the script he was given he actually had a little, little bit of a character arc where he realized he can't use this anymore, so he took it off and got down to bare tap. They said he was a guy that helped turn the flow around to the bad guys. Like he's finally kicking ass, and then Sonya and then Lou Kane started doing it. But then they ruined it with the shitty looking animality. What was it? Animosity. It's a fucking atrocity, is what it fucking is. It's where it'll be glorious. No, Brian Thompson, you were glorious in this. No matter if Stallone was too busy wanting to watch basketball, where the fuck the story was. Cobra is still up better than most of the shit you've done, Brian Thompson. Including the film you directed. The Extendables, or whatever the fuck it was called. Cobra is still better than that movie, dude. And even if Stallone, like I said, there's a story like Stallone wasn't paying attention to the movie, too busy with basketball, well... Still, I can understand his frustration, but I still really enjoy this movie, Cobra. By the way, I'm going off track. Like, Mortal Kombat is better. Resident Evil, what direct we see, yeah, it's R-rated, but you barely see much of anything. You see you see a little bit of blood, but nothing. Oh, my God. Again, the effect's almost the same quality. But Mortal Kombat has personality. Pacing is tighter. It's more fun. It's got more charisma. And it gives the audience what you want. You want to see fight scenes, you get quite a few good fight scenes. What do we see? You don't even get a lot of like zombie killing. Or monster killing. You got one licker and no human kills a licker. A fucking blind mutated bitch kills the licker. And then she disappears. Maybe she disappeared to the Twilight Zone. Maybe she disappeared, I don't know. The thin fucking air. Maybe she disappeared and ran away and went with to Resident Evil 4 land. I don't fucking know. Maybe she found Nemesis. They went to find a bus to catch. She got hitched in Vegas. I don't fucking know. They did a sequel. It'll be her and Nemesis having a baby with each other. Bastard Case 3 style. Where the fuck? The progeny. Where the fuck he was taught? I don't give a shit. Fuck Welcome to Raccoon City. But anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.